Join Mike and I as we talk about all the cool features on Windows Terminal Preview 1.17, including some community tr contributed features. So Windows Terminal 1.17 Preview, Mike, what's up with that? Uh, well, 117 is one of our bigger releases that we've had. Uh, we had a really long time to work on it, you know, with the holiday breaks. Uh, so we managed to get a whole lot of features packed into it. And a ton of it was all driven by community contributions, which I'm really excited about. Awesome. And um, for all you new viewers, um, to get Windows Terminal 1.17 preview, you can either um, install it um, inline using WinGet, or you can visit the Microsoft Store and get it in the store under Windows Terminal Preview. So what, uh, Mike, what, you know, you, you've been working a lot on 1.17. Uh, what's one of your favorite features from 1.17? Well, probably the one that the most people are the most excited about and the one that I'm the most excited about is the ability to customize the actual new tab dropdown, right? Uh, before in 1.16 and before that, it was just one long list of all your profiles and that, gets really unwieldy if you have like a lot of different SSH servers uh, or if you have a bunch of WSL distros installed, uh, mm -hmm. that list can get super unmanageable. Uh, mm -hmm. So now in 1.17, uh, you can actually customize it so that it's like nested and you can organize it however you want, uh, which I think is super helpful. It's something I've wanted for a really long time and we've finally been able to ship. And not only that, but this was something that a community member was able to co contribute. Yes, that is true. Um, yeah, when I look at the issue, um, I see that like this is like a completely community contributed feature. Um, shout outs to FWest ninety eight. He's the one that um, worked tirelessly on this feature, and I think I think I also see your name um, on like the PR as well or the re reviewers as well, Mike. Um, how was this experience of working with someone from the open source community? Well, I think this is a really good example of uh, a new way that we're kind of trying to approach contributions to the terminal. Uh, we knew that this was something we wanted to do. We had a really uh, well thought out design for it. We just didn't have the time to get to it. So in the original issue, I left kind of a walkthrough of a set of steps of things that I would do if I were gonna go implement this myself, uh, just kind of as a, a guide, a map of what files I would look at. Um, and then FWest was able to take that and actually go through and do the diligence of actually writing the code and verifying it and finding the little edge cases uh, and then uh, you know finally submitting the PR, which is great because that way we could work together. You know, I could provide my expertise in the code base and someone else could actually uh, write most of the code. And I think it was a really great opportunity for us to collaborate. He came up with a lot of good suggestions that we hadn't even considered yet. Uh, the ability to match a profile based off of just where it came from. So you only had to say it once in your settings. That was really handy. Like that was something he contributed and drove. Um, and it took us a long time to get this merged. Um, again, mostly holidays, but I'm really happy with the end result. It was a really solid PR by the end of it. Awesome. Yeah. And let me show the viewers the end result, actually. So here um, on my terminal, if you open the drop down menu, you can see that I have a command prompt Windows PowerShell, but I also have other other shells nested inside a folder I call my VS profiles. So everything here you see in the drop down, down menu is completely customized. And um, let me pop open the JSON to show you folks what it looks like. So to do this, um, you know, first I have a a step like a list of my profiles, command prompt, Windows PowerShell, a command prompt for VS Code and a PowerShell for VS Code. And because I have like these for VS Code, I want to um, nest them or put them in the folder. So to do that, I just make a new new tab menu object, arrange it by the order I want. So I did command prompt, Windows PowerShell, made a handy separator here to separate things and put my command prompt for VS and my PowerShell for VS in a folder. And I threw a nice icon, a VS icon for better organization. So that's what we get here. That looks pretty crisp. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I have seen online that um, some people in the community have made like nested, like nested folders. So they made a folder and a folder and a folder. Really cool. 
I like it doesn't work for my use case because I only have four profiles right now, but I can see how it could scale. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you think about having lots of different servers that you're working with, you know, different companies, maybe if you're a contractor of some sort. Um, absolutely. I, I've already got four folders set up for all of my stuff. I've got a crazy list of profiles. So nice. There is one. Um, yeah. That, speaking of um, contributions, there is one more contribution I want to talk about. Uh, let me exit my terminal real quick. Oh, look. It says now I can close this terminal with Control D or press Insta to restart. So what happened here is this new uh, feature we have in 1.17 called Process Restart. And this is an interesting community contribution because it was a community contribution from someone um, within Microsoft. So it was an internal community contribution made by uh, Scott Audison. And this is something that's um, it's been pretty um, popular online. I've seen like lots of people on Twitter raving about this um, feature. Like Mike, I think you've seen more, um, more, a lot of cases of this where someone from the community within Microsoft like contributed terminal. Does this happen like fairly often? Oh uh, yeah, this was a particular uh, drive that we did uh, this last November, I wanna say. Mm -hmm. uh, every so often within Microsoft, we have a miniature hackathon uh, where people are free to just kind of work on whatever projects they want. And as a part of that project, you know, I took some of those walkthroughs that we had been compiling, shared them around the rest of our organization. And I worked with Steve before in the past. Um, he just, you know, picked this one off the list and decided that he wanted this. He wrote the code, you know, followed the walkthrough and here it is, you know, we were able to ship it, you know, a few weeks later, I'm really happy with it. Like, um, this is a huge feature, especially if you get another SSH feature, you know, uh, if you ever have your network connection drop and SSH just exits, you don't have to reopen the tab. You just hit enter and bam, right back to where you were. So, yes. Yeah, for me, it's like a huge quality of life improvement. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, I've heard like, yeah, I hear you mentioning a lot about walkthroughs. So it sounds like anyone um, from the open source community can easily contribute to terminal with like these walkthroughs out there. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, we've got a uh, project board, a new GitHub's projects board uh, that's listing off all our walkthroughs. I'm going through some of our older issues and trying to write walkthroughs in there and sorting them by difficulty. So if people are interested in contributing to the terminal, they can just go look at that board and pick something off that list. Nice. And I think we also have tags for a good first issue as well. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. I think... Um, there is one last question I have about 1.17, um, and I guess like Windows Terminal in general. I know um, that scheme switching has been like a hot topic um, recently, Mike. So spill the tea. What's going so, on? Yeah, so in 1.16, we first introduced the ability to set the theme of your terminal. Uh, this allowed you to uh, do things like customize the color of the title bar or the tabs so that they can be like seamless with the rest of it. Um, but one of the things that kept coming up and has been coming up in comments online for years is people want the ability to have the terminal match what their system theme is, right? So normally, you know, the terminal is dark, right? Um, it's, it's a black window with white text, but a lot of people like having the operating system switch from dark theme at night to light theme during the day. And they kind of wish that it would flip to be light during the day. So in 117, we actually managed to find another Microsoft contributor who would help us write that code. So right now, you know, you can see my terminal in dark theme because I'm a normal person who likes dark theme. And, uh, but if I really want to switch to light theme, the terminal can do that. And as soon as I switch to a light theme, the whole body of the terminal, all the text switches to being in light theme. Um, just as soon as I switch the theme or if I sync it up with the OS theme. It's super handy, you know, if this is the kind of look that you want, if you want it to match the rest of the operating system, it can now, um, which I think is super cool. Um, it's definitely something that the community has been asking for for a long time. Uh, and now that I have it, I kind of like it, you know? It's kind of nice. weird, it's kind of grown on me. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for joining us um, today, Mike. Um, this is 
been really great. And um, for all you viewers, please um, try out Windows 1.17 preview. Um, our next update is uh, Windows 1.18 preview, and that will come out next quarter. So until then, um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, and stay tuned for more Windows terminal goodness here on Open at Microsoft. Bye. <laughs>